It came from outer space on 4K Blu-ray Universal Essentials Collection. This is my review for day 7 of 31 of my 31 Days of Horror. Listen to that awesome 50s sci-fi <laughs> annoying screechy music that sets the mood perfectly. Uh, so this is 1953 and one thing that is interesting in all the artwork, this lady's in it and she's in the movie for less than a minute. Most amazing title card ever. My eight-year-old son said he said that that was a very satisfying explosion and I tend to agree. So comparing the Blu-ray to the 4K, the 4K is quite a bit darker. And one, one major difference is that on the Blu-ray, the whites are, they're more like uniform and washed out. Whereas on the 4K, like the whites in the fire and on her dress are much more nuanced. And you can like see different shades inside of the white instead of it just being like white washed out like on the Blu-ray. Look at her awesome dress. Look at the texture on her dress. My eight-year-old also commented that he said they're in love, huh? And it's like, yep. Oh, look at the texture on this thing. That is an awesome dress. So she's talking about how the Sagittarius needs a Scorpio. Oh, someone didn't come along to make him a meal occasionally. He'd starve if someone didn't make him a meal. <laughs> Listen to this. They're gonna kiss, but he's clueless. Listen to what she says. And is quite helpless in certain situations. <laughs> so then he gets the point, and they actually are gonna kiss, but they get interrupted. Okay. I know there's the reflection of the TV, but on the Blu-ray, on the Blu-ray, as as that thing's crossing the sky, it's like I don't know if it's film scratches or film ripples or what, but there's just like all these lines in the bright spot as it goes across. So the 4K uh, looks a lot better with with the HDR and with the restoration it looks really really good there is a major difference between the two so like I said there's a major difference between the blu-ray and the 4k so pretty much all the film scratches are gone and there's still occasional specs but it's mostly clean and then there's like a light film grain whereas the blu-ray has more like a clumpy film grain that's a lot more obvious and distracting all right and about the audio so curiously if you look at the audio let's see if I can get that to focus says it's a DTS HD MA 3.0 LCR discrete, so left, center, right, 3.0. It's actually, it actually sounds really good. Like, it's very clear, and there's actually a few parts where you hear things happening out of the different speakers. Um, but it was very, very clear, and the, that screechy 50s sci-fi music bored straight into my soul and really set the mood. So I've, I've been loving watching these old movies, and one thing that you're never going to see in, an old, in a movie nowadays is something like this lady, boop, telling this guy, boop, that she's going to make a sandwich for him. <laughs> You're never going to see that in a movie nowadays. So another difference between the Blu-ray and the 4K. On this part, uh, you can see a lot more details in that little spaceship thing. Look at them free-balling it in this helicopter with no canopy or windshield. I mean, there's a windshield, but look at this. They're just riding and having a totally normal conversation <laughs> with no top on this thing. It's got to be loud. All right, now I'm as excited as the next guy to go jumping into a space crater, but when this guy when this guy just starts running down there to check it out, I was just like, where's your PPE, man? This long shot coming up right here is one of the best shots in the entire movie. I'm pretty sure they have a tiny little miniature. This little guy, look at him. Look at him. He's adorable down there. Little tiny. It's like a little, little tiny guy. Uh, but the shot looks good and it's totally convincing. It's just if you look close, it's like a little, little mini person in there. So throughout the movie, as people are crossing these big open air desert spaces through Arizona that normally aren't scary, especially in the broad daylight, this, well, this, this is still at nighttime, but this movie does a really got, good job of just making like the open desert just like a really creepy place where creepy things can happen. And this is kind of like a jump scare where you, I mean, you saw the alien at the first for like one second, but this is the first time you really get a look at him. What the <laughs> Look at that, so cool. <laughs> it 
It looks it's like Bob from Monsters versus Monsters versus Aliens. Speaking of which, Monsters versus Aliens is a really awesome movie that's like a callback to all these old 50s monster movies. And then he dramatically drives the point home that the desert by itself even without aliens is a scary place. A thousand ways the desert can kill. Listen to this. Where are you? What do you look like? What am I supposed to be looking for? So he says, where are you? What do you look like? What am I supposed to be looking for? He just saw him like a minute ago in front of his car on the road, like full body shot, full detail. So I don't know if like they didn't get to see all the detail we did, but they portrayed it right in front of the car and they were looking at it and screaming. So he's like, where are you? And what do you look like? What do you mean what does he look like? He looks like a blob with a giant eyeball on it. Pay attention, guy. Look at this. See how his hand? His hand, like, it shows the alien point of view, and then as his hand reaches out, you see it, like, materializing almost. So he's, like, gaining the disguise of this guy. And that's one thing I think really adds to the just general creepiness of the movie, is that the aliens, boop, can be disguised as humans. I think it, and then they just act all weird, like all monotone. Um, kind of reminds me of, there's like, there's like a, this is going way deep, and no one's probably seen this, but there's a Roughneck Starship Troopers episode Roughneck Starship Troopers Chronicles episode where they're on Earth and all the townsfolk are like taken over by aliens and all they keep saying is like the same thing. They just like look at them and they say in monotone, they're like, lovely weather, wouldn't you say? And so I just think that's like such a, a awesome, classic, creepy sci-fi trope of just like humans being the alien and then them just being like creepy and off. So it like unsettles everyone around them. Here's one of the creepiest shots in the entire movie. It's with these two guys that have been, that are aliens in disguise as humans. Look at this thing. Look at this shot! I love this! George? That's just about the creepiest thing ever. Frank, keep away. Ah, I love it. Ooh, okay. Of Look at this Hello. blonde girl. Hi. Still, tell John what you told me. So the fact that this lady is in the promotional posters is pretty ridiculous because she's only in it for a few minutes. But the few minutes, or I mean, gosh, it's probably less than a minute. But the less than a minute that she's in it, she is the flirtiest flirt that ever flirted. Her boyfriend in this is missing. And like all these people walk in and she's like, hi. <laughs> and, then, and then listen to what she says about his appetite. I think there might be a double entendre here. In his eyes and he never touched his food. Same for George. His landlady told me he skipped dinner. And that ain't like George. Not with his appetite. <laughs> oh, gosh. So me and my wife were talking about this lady, whether it's written into the script for her just to be a flirty flirt, or if the actress is like, look, I've got one minute of screen time. Like, I'm going to milk this thing and use this as a resume. Look at her. Look at this pose. <laughs> so she's like she's talking about George's appetite. And uh, and then watch when, when uh, they send them all home, like how she says goodbye. I swear. I don't know. I don't think I need to read much into this. I think she's being a flirt, even though her boyfriend is missing and she's acting like this. So anyway, I think that she just played it like this to get some flirty screen time. Okay, watch her. Watch her. <laughs> what the heck? All right, so this movie has some really great classic sci-fi themes, like when the alien's like, I don't want to show myself to you because you would freak out. You're not ready to see us. And the aliens didn't mean to come to this planet, and they want to visit eventually, but they know that like humanity's not ready to handle meeting them. I thought that was pretty cool. And then a couple things about this part. So he's, he's making a posse, the sheriff is, which... Uh, in the context of the movie actually makes me really sad because I just want everything to be peaceful. But for to have an entertaining movie, I'm also really exciting that they're gathering a posse. And check this out. So he gathers all these like town citizens and just starts handing out all these police rifles. Okay, so here's the posse in action. So they're basically, it's sheriff's asking him to shoot the, sh the electrician guy, the, the phone services guy. Anyway, so what I wanted to say about the posse that I think is really interesting. So first of all, a lot of these old classic movies, like people just are packing handguns, like it's no big deal. They just pop them out. Um, so that's one thing is people just essentially concealed carrying weapons. But when the, when the sheriff goes and gets all these just, just adult men of the town and he's like, Hey, I need a posse. They all know how to use a rifle. 
Like if you just ran into town square nowadays and the police are like, we need guys, here's a bunch of rifles. Like who knows how to use this? Like what percentage of townsfolk would know how to do that? And so this is also an interesting, I know it's like a total sci-fi horror movie, but it's also an interesting snapshot into the early fifties where your general adult male knew how to use a rifle, either from World War II or just growing up in a rural rural area where you would have a rifle anyway. So I think that's that's kind of a cool thing to see in this movie. It's just all these dudes using rifles and they know how to do it. Definitely wouldn't be the case nowadays. Look at no elegant alien magic wand zapping. You know, I think anytime you have to shoot a, a facsimile of a, an alien facsimile of your girlfriend in a fancy, fancy dress, it's probably a rough psychological time. All right, so he determines he's got to close the mine shaft to keep the aliens safe and give them more time to repair their ship, but also to keep themselves safe, safe and keep the posse from going in there. Uh, but he, this pile of dynamite that he throws in there, like I don't know if that's the actual thing that causes the explosion. Probably not. It's probably just a prop with a fuse on it. But I think that they really did like a life-size explosion here. I don't think this is like a miniature. And the reason is when the explosion goes off, um, watch watch all the dirt on the ground, and uh, we'll we'll go over what we see. <laughs> See that? So it kind of like, so there's the explosion and then you kind of see it like almost like jump up. And when I've, when I've been really, really, really close to um, 100 to 155 millimeter artillery going off. And if you look at the ground, it does the same thing. It kind of just like jumps. And so I think that was a real explosion and I think it was a good one. If it wasn't, they convinced me because I've been by real explosions and they look like that. So good job, this movie. If, if that's a miniature, but to, I think it was a bit real size one because it looked really good. All right, so chronologically going back a little bit before the explosion, I wanted to show him coming face to face with his with his alien fake disguise uh, self, who happens to be really hip with this neck scarf thing. Could you kill me too? Listen so to this, this line. Is the end. Love this. The grand total of all our dreams. I came here to help you, not to kill. Stay where you are. Okay, so I actually love that about, like, kind of classic sci-fi movies, like this and and classic 1960s Star Trek. One of the things I love about it is, anyway, I like how it's like 60s Star Trek, where Kirk always has violence be the last resort, and they're always trying to be peaceful. And so I, I kind of like that here as well, where he's like, I'm just trying to help. He's like, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to help you. And so I think that kind of sci-fi is more hopeful and enjoyable. Because earlier, this guy and the sheriff had a discussion about, like, what do you do of something you're afraid of or don't understand? And the sheriff's like, you kill it. And then the guy's like, exactly. So that's why the aliens don't want to meet us just yet. <laughs> hey, bud. You little talker. Yeah. Go. They repaired their ship and they're out of here. Well, they've gone. For good, John. For good, John. Oh, no, just for now. It wasn't the right time for us to meet. All right, well, 1953, it came from outer space on 4K. Absolutely amazing. This was a blind buy for me and I loved it. Uh, it's not like a super action movie, but it was very, very good. And I'm happy to have seen it. One of my subscribers recently commented on the unboxing that they would like to see um, this planet Earth, the thing, and um, several several others, like classic 50s sci-fi movies restored like this. I would love that and I would buy all of them. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, this has been day seven of 31 of my 31 days of horror movies because I stretched it a little bit and um, this movie is a sci-fi horror, so I, I counted it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Bye!